On this 18th Nintendo Switch hauled episode, we're checking out some new controllers, game card cases, a few updated favorites, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. It's all here. I'm Sergio I am. Welcome to It Came From A Box. Satisfies Nintendo Switch Zen Grip is back, but now it's dockable. This is the Ronin. It's compatible with both the normal and OLED Switch in either black or white, and you can also get it bundled with one of their carrying cases. And it has everything we loved about the original, that being their silicone spacers, which help avoid damaging the console, but also makes it so both versions of the Switch can fit, the asymmetrical design that correctly positions your thumb over the right analog stick, my favorite set of large grips that feel incredible in hand, and it can stand on its own two feet, literally. But now we have two secure game card slots, one in each grip, and they move the feet off to the side and reduce most of the back plate, which makes the kickstand accessible, albeit at an odd angle. But those changes now make it dock compatible. It just drops in with zero friction. It just works. That alone upgrades it to one of the best Nintendo Switch grips out there. These are PDP's Realms line of controllers that have these multi-layered designs with a floating figure on the inside, which gives us this really cool parallax effect. They're available in wired and wireless versions with a few differences between each. Build quality is top notch. They're lightweight and I like the rounded compact design. The face and shoulder buttons work well, same for the triangular triggers. We've got a sturdy and accurate D-pad, as well as a solid pair of grippy analog sticks with just the right amount of resistance. Now, sadly, they don't have rumble, motion controls, nor NFC for Amiibos, but let's be honest, we're here for the designs. They've got three for Sonic, there's one for Pikmin, my personal favorite, then there's another for Transformers, and they even have a Sonic headset, which looks awesome. On top of that, they have adjustable LEDs with multiple lighting modes, which really make these pop. I absolutely love these, so if you want all the details, check out our full review. As someone who collects physical Switch games, my first world problem is having to swap them out when docked. But Unitech's Game Card Switcher makes all that less of a hassle. On it, we have four working game card slots and four above for storage. Next, on the back, we have a clamp so we can attach it to either the original or OLED model of the dock. Then we have this game card adapter, which clicks into the console's game card slot. And finally, you connect the power cable. Now, when you turn on the switch, it'll show the game on that first slot. And to change it, you can press either the switch button or use the included wireless remote to switch to the next slot. It works really well, and each slot is color coded so you can visually know which you're on. And for those wondering, don't worry, when you put it to sleep, as long as it's powered on, you should be able to wake it up and continue where you left off. And there you go. It's a simple fix that some would call a game changer. Y you see what I did there? The Nitro Deck is a handheld controller for both the original and OLED Switch that gives you better ergonomics and controls along with some extra features. It's available in many versions, including these sold out limited editions, and you can get them by themselves or in a few bundles. I'd recommend one with a carrying case. It's got a bubbly ergonomic design that's really well made, it feels great in hand, and it doesn't interfere with anything on the console. The face buttons work well, same for the curvy D-pad. I also like the clicky shoulder buttons, but I wish the triggers didn't have so much travel. Now the analog sticks are Hall Effect, so they shouldn't drift, they're larger and swappable, but they have a noticeable dead zone, and it's sadly in a very cramped position. Then it has a few extra features, such as programmable back buttons, basic turbo and macro functions, a friction hinge, and more, which you can check out in our full review. Also, before you pull the trigger, just know that an upgraded plus version is releasing soon. Hagibis, makers of that awesome tiny Switch game toaster, is back with another fidgety game card case. This is their G Game Storage Case. Not the most exciting name. It's available in two designs. It looks like a snow globe with this dome at the top. Remove it, and in here we have 10 game card slots. You'll need to fill each in order for the effect to work correctly, but if you don't have enough, they include these fake ones to fill in the rest. They slide right in, and once you're done, you'll see that one pops out like this. It's a magnetic levitation, which lifts this specific area, so when you spin this dial underneath, the games rotate around it, with each bouncing as they pass that spot. 
It can get a bit intense in there, which is why it has a silicone base, and you're going to want to keep that dome attached to contain them. It's very mesmerizing, and rotating the dial feels so satisfying. So if you like the idea of a fidgety carousel to store your Switch games, check out Hagibus's Game Storage Case. Yeah, they got to work on that name. One of the most portable and versatile Switch docks out there is back with a few upgrades. This is Genki's Covert Dock 2. It's part of their latest Alpine collection, which shares this slick, white, and transparent retro design. Now, it's about the same size as the original, and same goes for the layout. On the back, we still have that Type A power prong, and it includes those three other global adapters that you can just slide on to use. On the front, we have those same three ports as before, but this time the USB-C has been upgraded from 30 watts to 45 watts so it can keep up with the latest tech, and the HDMI does the same by taking a leap from 1080p60 to now 4K60, which should make it future-proof for the next version of the Switch. As for the USB-A port, same as before, you can charge your tech with it, but it can also connect them to the USB-C attached device. So for example, if you hooked up your Switch, you can use that port to add something like a wired controller. Overall, it's a worthy successor to one of the most versatile pieces of tech I've come across. I missed out on the first version, but this is Genki's Shadowcast 2. It's one of the tiniest capture cards I've come across, and it lets you hook up your console, be it the Switch, PlayStation, or Xbox, so you can then view, stream, and record your gameplay. It has that alpine white and transparent design, and although it's the same size as the previous version, it's been upgraded from USB 2.0 to 3.2, which gives it 10 times more bandwidth, and can now support up to 1080p 60 capture quality. The HDMI connects to your console, and yes, it also works with the Covert Dock 2, and the USB-C cable connects to your PC. It's plug and play, and once connected, you can use it with either OBS or with Genki's Arcade via web browser, but because they make it so it's recognized as a webcam, you can also use it with Zoom, Google Meet, and other video conferencing apps. Then, it can also go further with other devices such as your camera or iPad. Overall, it's a simple but powerful little capture card that's perfect for those looking to start streaming or capturing your own gameplay. This is the Shadowcast 2 Pro. Think of it like a juiced up version of the normal Shadowcast with all the core features that you can use to view, stream, and record your console gameplay, but it goes further. Love this gray and white transparent colorway, and it feels well made with this rubber-like plastic up top and a rigid shell throughout. On the back, we have a USB-C port to power and connect your PC or tablet, a new and highly requested HDMI port for zero latency pass-through, this other one connects to your console or other device. And then we have two 3.5 millimeter audio jacks for headphones, game controller audio, and an external microphone. So it supports 1080p at 120 hertz and up to 4K at 60 hertz. But while other capture cards only support 4K 60 input, the Shadowcast 2 Pro supports both input and output so you can play and record at 4K 60. On top of that, it also supports HDR and VRR and more which altogether makes it our current favorite capture card. This is an officially licensed mini blockbuster VHS replica, which is of course a Nintendo Switch game card case by Retro Fighters. It's from their limited production series one collection, so it won't be around for long. It can hold 12 games and four micro SD cards, and it has the same look and feel of a VHS. Same for the case, looks just like the real thing. It's smaller than a real one. It has all of those remember to rewind labels, along with these textured details throughout. They even replicated the look of reels inside. To get inside, it has this snappy but secure magnetic closure, which makes it very easy to open and close, and it has a nice and smooth hinge. Inside, we have our game and memory card slots. They're made of a rigid but soft silicone, and once they're on here, the fit is very snug. They're not going anywhere. And then you can easily pop them out with this little ejection slot on the edge. Overall, it's a great game card case that, you know, just happens to look like a blockbuster VHS, and I absolutely love it. This is Kiwi's Master Case, a low-profile sling bag for the Switch. You can get it in black or this white, and I believe 70% of it is made of RPET, which stands for these big words here. It comes with a shoulder strap and handle, which attach to different points on the bag, and you can carry it in a few ways. Off the sides, we have two thin pockets. We have YKK zippers throughout, with a useful anti-theft loop on the main compartment. Inside, it's wrapped in this unique dotted shock absorbing foam with enough room for most of your accessories. They also sell these arc velcro dividers that wrap around your gear that attach to the soft padded material at the bottom to keep it in place. 
Now the switch goes in this thickly padded slot underneath. It has these straps to prevent it from opening all the way, and you can also use it along with these tabs as a sort of tabletop stand. Finally, we have this insert with 16 elastic game card slots. So if you want a bag to carry both your Switch and EDC gear, check out Kiwi's Master Case. Another 10 down and there's no end in sight because we already have a mountain to unbox next. But handing it off to you, let me know what you loved, what you didn't, along with anything else you'd like us to check out on the next episode, and let's talk in the comments. Also, if you're looking to pick up anything featured in this video and want to support us at the same time, please check out the affiliate links down in the description below because this costs a lot of money. Once again, this is Sergio AM. Thanks for liking and subscribing, and I'll see you for the next box. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video and want to help us out, you can do so by clicking that thumbs up button. And while you're at it, why not subscribe for more content? It's free. We also love to hear you out, so please leave a comment down below or talk with us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I'm Sergio IM, and I'll see you for the next box.